Hello and welcome to the Cornwall Report's news briefing for Monday the 20th of May, the local media headlines today. There seems to have been a huge increase in the number of children in Cornwall referred to gender identity clinics. In 2022 that number was 60, in 2011 it was only 5. We don't yet know the reasons for such a sharp rise, but it's one of the issues which is going to be investigated soon by a committee of Cornwall councillors. We're approaching a critical go-or-no-go decision about the Mid-Cornwall Metro Railway project. The decision will almost certainly be to go ahead because of political considerations this close to a general election. They'll outweigh any prudent economic caution. Meanwhile, the Reform UK party seems to be having a few problems in the St Austell and Newquay constituency. There's much interest in how much it's costing taxpayers to send no fewer than 12 council staff and others to Leeds for a property conference. My guess is there won't be much change from £80,000. And did you know that Cornwall has ambitions for significant trade links with South Korea? Neither did South Korea. The St Ives Times and Echo came out on Friday and led with an account of the town's mayor-making ceremony. It would of course have been news if the town council had not elected a mayor, but in St Ives they're sticklers for tradition, even if nobody can remember why. The BBC had another traditional nonsense story, this one about worm charming. The Falmouth packet covered a reenactment of one of the local D-Day scenes. Greatest Hits Radio warned of thunderstorms. And finally Cornwall Live brought us up to date with the Shed of the Year competition. And those are the local media headlines for now. Thank you very much for watching. Please share this video on social media. I'll be back again tomorrow. See you then. Bye bye.